Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Exposure TV. I'm Lloyd Davis. And I'm Laura Harris. We've got a, sh a great show lined up for you over the next hour and we'll be bringing you exclusive news, interviews and entertainment. Aren't we spoiling you? <laughs> we sure are. On the, on the day of Baroness Satter's funeral, we speak to Conservative councillor Craig Williams about her legacy. Personal trainer James Date shows us how to get fit for summer at home. And we take part in the dreaded presenter challenge. As always, we want to hear what you guys at home think of the show, as well as your thoughts and opinions on everything we talk about. You can tweet us here at Exposure TV. Alex, how can our audience get in touch? Well, there are a couple of ways you guys can get in touch at home. You can tweet us at TV Exposure or search Exposure Radio and TV on Facebook. We want to hear what you guys at home have to say about everything and anything to do with today's show along with anything that's trending. And obviously today's trends are all to do with Margaret Thatcher's funeral and Cardiff City getting into the Premier League. So keep your tweets coming in at TV Exposure. And don't forget, guys, please keep it clean or I can't read them out on the show. And you can also watch us at exposuretelevision.wordpress.com. Laura and Lloyd, it's back to you. Thanks, Alex. Now, as we said, we've got a jam-packed show coming up for you. over joined by station manager, Richard Carey. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm um, good, thanks. Good, right, well, we're going to dive into today's news stories and into the papers, so I think we'll start off with um, the Daily Mail, yes. which is covered with um, the, the funeral of Baroness Thatcher. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all about uh, Margaret Thatcher today. Um, mm. Obviously, her funeral, it's, it's been a little bit controversial because, obviously, how much money has gone into it, but, at, but um, obviously, Margaret Thatcher was a very... Um, Important, I guess. I guess a significant figure in the history of politics, being the only female prime minister. And it's also quite significant that she was voted in three times as well. I, I, I do think that is that is very significant. I do think, however, the money spent on it is is a very, very large sum. Yeah. It's very excessive. Well, um, when you consider what times we're in and the, yeah, the, the cutbacks, it does to suggest there has to be questions asked about spending millions of pounds on a funeral for. Uh, head of state when they might have some money themselves you know a lot of people have to pay for their own funerals exactly. so is it is it really fair that she has you know she gets it um, paid by the taxpayer I don't know but yeah it's one so, that'll keep going isn't it so the next one is what we've been tweeting about and it's from the Western Mail and it's the uh, promotion of Cardiff City um, so Richard what do you think this is going to do for well this has been a long time coming for Cardiff because it's the three years beforehand, playoffs and all the time, you know, losing out of the playoffs, but finally... They've, they've hacked away and they've made it eventually. Finally they are in I the Premiership. It's, it's 53 years, I think, it's the first yeah. time they've been in. And, and the thing is about it really is, is that for a club the size of Cardiff, you would expect them probably to be in the Premiership. They've got, you know, Malaysian owners who've got a lot of um, money and they've got, you know, we've got like guys like Craig Bellamy, he's like an established international and um, and Premiership player beforehand, and it's just like it, it seems like it's almost overdue for them to get to the Premiership. Mm. And now, obviously, back in the same league as Swansea, so it'll be very interesting yes. to have a Welsh rivalry yeah. back. What about the fans as well? I think this picture basically sums up. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this at home. Um, so a complete pitch invasion. It's like yeah. the biggest game of Where's Wally ever. You just see all these little little faces here. I don't think you could spot anyone out of that, you know, absolute elation from uh, the Cardiff City fans. Yeah, absolutely. And the next thing we're going to discuss is this. It's taken from one of the segments, I think, from The Guardian. Yeah. G2. And from the polite, yes, G2. Yeah. And it's basically, it's about um, how old we feel and people of certain ages, is, um, the majority are saying they feel a lot younger. Do you feel a lot younger, younger than this you actually quite, it's How quite, do you feel? It's quite interesting. I'm, I'm a slightly mature student, um, <laughs> although I'm a first, I'm because I'm 25. Um, but some people think I'm quite young, younger than that. It kind of depends how much facial hair I've got usually. <laughs> but if I've got like a full-on beard, I look my age, and if I don't, then I look about um, 19 or something. <laughs> and it was interesting because I was at this. Um, because some people, they, you do, they're mid twenties, but they look like they're in the thirties, and maybe they feel like that. And actually, you, sometimes it's better to be slightly old, to think you're slightly old, because people treat you more like an adult. Whereas as a student, it's quite difficult to, you know, get that. Do I get treated as an adult? Do I get treated as a kid? You know, 
especially when you're around family, I think, you know, when they've grown up with you being the kid, yeah. I mean, it never really changes how old you get. No, I completely agree. There's, um, the, um, Tim Dowling um, is in here, and he, he's actually 49, but says he feels 39. Um, and he makes a really interesting point that when he imagines himself, he still imagines himself looking like a 39-year-old. And I think that's quite true, really, isn't it? I, I don't imagine myself looking my age. I, I think sometimes I imagine myself as a child. Yep. <laughs> how old do you think you are than that? Well, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I've never really thought about it, I don't think. OK, so the next one is, Richard, you actually pointed this out to us. Um, someone has written the resignation on a cake. <laughs> well, basically, the story is that uh, this guy who, who was a, um, his name's Chris Holmes, and he was an immigration officer. And he basically decided to quit his job so he could um, make cakes. So to do that quite creatively, instead of you know, writing the normal resignation letter, He's, he's written, he's iced it on a cake. It must have taken him hours to do the so nice. whole it shows letter. Beautiful. I think it shows his skills, though. If he's going into the cake-making business, I think, I think he's just showing that he's got great skills. If you, if you want an essay on a cake, or if you, want, <laughs> if you want any kind of writ, if you want a poem, you know, maybe just all sorts of written, written cakes, maybe. Maybe that's, it could be his, his niche, his USP, if you will. OK. <laughs> I think so. Well, Thank you very much for coming in, Richard. No worries. Yeah. Again, thanks to Richard. Now, the cost of Margaret Thatcher's funeral is estimated to be about £10 million. Now, which has been met with a mixed response. Here at Exposure TV, we like to hear what you think. So we sent our reporter, Alice Campion, out onto the streets of Cardiff to find out what you thought. The funeral of Margaret Thatcher takes place today. I decided to take to the streets of Cardiff to see how people feel about the amount of money spent on the funeral. I think it's a scandal. I don't think she's a scandal. No. Yeah. Good person, eh? Yeah, very good. She deserved it, I think. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, we're in this time of recession and what have you. Everybody is penny pinching and they go and invest this on non event, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think you've got to remember she was voted in by the country three times in 12 years, so some people think she made a massive contribution to. Society, some people think it's a waste of time, but I mean, I uh, just think it's horrendous. I cannot understand why we're doing that for her when we've never done it for a socialist um, prime minister. I just don't understand it at all. I think there are an awful lot of things you could do with it alternatively, but then this money is likely allocated by the government for these sorts of events in any case. Well, I think sure it's well worth it. Uh, yeah, did a lot of good for the country. Why not? Oh, I dare say it's a rather a lot coming from Wales as well and what she's done for our country in the past few years. So, yeah, I think it's a bit overboard. I mean, she should have a decent funeral, definitely, but um, 10 million, oof. Coming up on the rest of the show. Coming up on the rest of the show, Peter Barbary talks to us about his time studying at Glamorgan University. He'll be sticking around to tell us about how he feels about Cardiff City being promoted to the top flight for the first time in 53 years. And we speak to Conservative councillor Craig Williams about Margaret Thatcher. Now, the University of Glamorgan is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. After, <laughs> after um, thousands of students have passed through its doors and graduated, we at Exposure TV have decided to catch up with the Glamorgan al alumnus and Labour councillor, Peter Bradbury, who joins us in the studio now. Thank you for coming in, Peter. Thank you, Peter. It's great to be back at Glamorgan University. <laughs> so, when, when, when you were here... Oh, I don't think we can hear you, so if we just grab our emergency <laughs> microphone. There you go, if you could just hold that for us, that'd be amazing. Um, what, what did you study here at Glamorgan while you were here? Well, I studied media studies and sociology, and um, it gave me a good background into um, doing things like this, now in my professional career, and also um, gave me a, um, taught me a lo lot of why I believe in what I believe. And um, I loved it here, it was fantastic, best years of my life. Um, and I, and I hope you're enjoying it here, I really <laughs> yeah. do. So, uh, can you explain what your job is now? Well, I work as a um, 
researcher for Kevin Brennan, member of parliament in his constituency office. A Card he's a local MP here um, in the neighbouring constituency in Cardiff West. Um, and I'm also a Car uh, Cardiff County Councillor who was elected last year for the first time in May in um, Cairo Ward, in, um, which is near where I live in Ely. So it's um, great to represent a local area and um, be elected by people, so many people who know me personally. So it's fantastic. Fantastic. That's a, such a great achievement. Um, how do you think that your degree has influenced you, obviously, coming from, in, from Glamorgan? Well, in, um, in the political side of things, you know, um, I think a lot of it, um, what my degree was used for, is was the communication and learning how to um, get a point across and get it across in a certain space of time. I mean, I'm sure Councillor Williams will, um, t will t agree with me on this later on, that you get in the council chamber, you get three minutes to make your point. As you are finding out here, um, you have to learn what to cut and what to keep in in certain things like speeches and to make sure that you're, you make a succinct point. And that's what I would say um, was the main thing I took from my degree that I'm using now in, um, in my professional life. Okay, so what advice would you give to our students who are going to be graduating in the next couple of months for their future outside of university? It's never too early to start writing your CV. Um, it's never too early to get advice on things like covering letters um, from lecturers like Julie Kissick here in the university. She's very good. Um, it's never too. Um, it's never never ask. You can never ask enough questions. Hmm. You know, and it's and if you get that little piece of work experience that you that that, that you think might be worthless, a, a, a week with, like making coffee for the radio for Red Dragon may not sound fantastic, but you may pick some stuff up that yeah. you may not have get from your from working here in the University of Glamorgan. So I would, you know, basically be a big sponge, I would say, and soak everything up and then and never be afraid never be afraid to look stupid as well. Again, Councillor Williams <laughs> will tell you I've looked stupid on many an occasion. But it's like um, you know, never be afraid to to take on a challenge that you, you that that isn't in your comfort zone. So take things on. To get, you, yeah. to get as much experience as possible in different fields then. Exactly, exactly. I'll give you an example. One of the first things I did in radio in this university was documentary drama. I, you know, I was, I'm, a, I'm, a sports, I'm a massive sports fan. I wanted to do sport. <laughs> so I didn't want to do the Radio 4 style of plays. But, you know, I took, but what we got from that is how to write a running order, how to cram yeah. things in, how to decide... Um, which scene was more important than another scene, and that is vitally important if you want a job in the media. And also, the other advice is don't get transfixed on getting jobs in the media. What you're getting here could translate into so many other fields. It's unbelievable. So you know. So where do you see your future going? Um, well, you never rule anything in or out. I mean, I, I, I love my job at the moment. Um, I'm very happy as a county councillor for Cairo. I'd like to, I, you know, I'd, I'll be definitely trying to run for re-election in um, 2017. From then, who knows, you know, if, I, if, if I'm not going to rule out trying to become an AM, it's something I would like to do on a member of parliament because you can help people on a much wider scale yeah. um, in those positions. But... I mean, there's a lot of talented people in politics and a lot of talented people in the Labour Party, and it's a very competitive field, very much like the one you're going to find in the job market mm -hmm. when you go in the media. So, Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Peter. Um, and Peter will be sticking around for a little longer to chat to us about the recent developments at Cardiff City Football Club. It's now time to catch up with Alex in the cloud. So, Alex, what have we got for us? Well, we've got a few tweets coming already. Uh, I'm going to dive in straight away with the first one. And this is to a guy who tweeted in last night after we went off air. Uh, and as you may know, we were hunting for our 500th follower. So congratulations to Jamie Pierce. You are Mr. 500. And so well done on that. Uh, secondly, we have a tweet from Cardiff Food Bank. And we will have a piece on them in the show later. So keep your eyes out for that one. But Cardiff Food Bank were just tweeting their congratulations to Cardiff City FC for their promotion last night. Uh, but stay tuned to find out more from Cardiff Food Bank. And finally, we have a tweet here from BBC Breaking News. This uh, is Baroness Thatcher's coffin as it's transferred to the hearse for the funeral procession, uh, which, of course, took place this morning. Now, keep on tweeting in about everything you see in today's show. We want to hear your opinions and thoughts. Remember, you can tweet us at TV Exposure, and I will do my best to read all of those out. It's time for a short break now. Make sure you stay tuned, and we'll see you back here after this.
Hello and welcome to Tequila Radio. Tequila Radio, the e-student radio station for Glamorgan. Live from the atrium, into your ears. This isn't a sandwich. This isn't a sandwich. This is a sandwich. The only place for lunch. Jump on board Princess Catherine, the reliable water bus service for a relaxing journey along the River Taff. The boat offers a regular service between Cardiff City Centre and Cardiff Bay, giving you the opportunity to indulge an hour throughout the day and costs £3 per adult and £2 per child. Made with the finest Swarovski elements and stunning crystal cards. Crystal Fizz will create your own uniquely handmade wedding and event stationery. And welcome back to Exposure TV, the place where we keep you up to date on the latest news and events. Don't forget to tweet into the show about anything you see and we'll do our best to read them out. Of course. Coming up in the rest of the show, we have a discussion on the story about young people texting while driving. And we take a look at another of Cardiff's hidden gems. With Margaret Thatcher's funeral happening today and a lot of focus on the policies put in place during her time as Prime Minister, we are joined by prospective Conservative parliamentary candidate for Cardiff North, Craig Williams, to discuss the legacy that Margaret Thatcher left behind, as well as discussing what she did for the Conservative Party. Thank you for coming in, Craig. Not at all. Thank you very much. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about the legacy that Margaret Thatcher left to the Conservative Party? Margaret Thatcher's legacy? Well, wow. Um, you know, <laughs> quite, a question. People, quite a question. How long have you got? But, you know, people say, you know, in a, in a nutshell, she put the great back into Great Britain. And I, I really do believe that. You know, you look, look in Cardiff, for example, the Cardiff Bay Development Company, that happened um, under a Thatcher government. You know, you look at uh, British Gas, that was privatised, you look at many of them. And, and the biggest thing about the, her legacy, I think, is successive governments of different colours, you know, I'm not going to get party political on this day, <laughs> but haven't reversed many of the changes she made. You know, people say how divisive and how bitter they are about what they did, but when they got into power, they didn't do anything about it. So what she did was right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, in your opinion, do you, you think she's left Britain rather in a better place? Oh yes, yeah, much better place. You know, but economically, standing in the world, you know, it's hard. It's hard for me, and I'm sure it's hard for you to imagine what kind of a state. You know, you you read the the, the history papers, you read the newspapers of the time. Britain really was the sick man of Europe, as they labelled us, and uh, she had the medicine. Yeah. So, she was in. She was prime minister for a good decade. Yeah. Her long run as Prime Minister, what did that do for the Conservative Party? What did it do for the Conservative Party? It turned us uh, into a party that absolutely admires her. <laughs> you know, I think she was the grandmother of the party um, and still is. And it's, it's something that, you know, she's up there. You know, we need a Prime Minister like Maggie. I think there was um, the Times or one of the opinion polls were going, if a young Margaret Thatcher was leading the party, where would you? And we'd beat the Labour Party in polling done today if Mar <laughs> a young Margaret Thatcher was in charge. You know, I think it's, it's, the problem is, um, in terms of what she did, she was so successful, she won all the arguments. So people today are saying, what do politicians stand for? What, and she divined this party, I think. Towards the end of her um, leadership then, things started to go downhill. What yeah. happened? Well, I think, you know, complacency. Not that she was complacent, but once you've been prime minister in any job for over a decade, 
you, you get used to it, you get used, you know, I think her, one of her great quotes was, um, yes, I believe in consensus, consensus behind my convictions, mm. you know, and that, that kind of sets the tone for what she was doing. So whether she was getting out of touch with her cabinet, with her party, with the public, you know, she never lost a popular vote. Yeah. Um, she was ousted by internal uh, mechanisms, which we could talk about all day. So, you know, she was, she was a great prime minister. Do you think as well it, she was even more influential, and influential sorry, possibly, yeah. because she was female? I think so. You know, she was our first female prime minister. Absolutely. And that's an accolade that nobody will ever take off her, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and I, I think she really did break a glass ceiling. Absolutely. So, obviously, there's been a big fuss about how much has been spent on the funeral. Yeah. If <laughs> Labour was in power at the moment, do you think the same money would have been spent? Well, it's funny you should say that, because these plans didn't come together this week or last week. Mm. They came together under a Labour government. Right. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown signed these uh, plans off. You know, it's, it's not something David Cameron just wished up. So it, it was formed under a Labour government. I think it's right. And, you know, just, just think about the European rebate for a second. She stuck it in there and got that. That's been worth £75 billion, pounds, this country. So, you know, quibbling uh, about £10 million on the day of a very, very sad day, funeral for one of our greatest statesmen, certainly the best peacetime prime minister. I think, you know, that's something I don't want to get involved in today. OK. Fair enough. Well, mm. thank you very much for talking to us. Not at all, any time. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming in. And we also have Ruth McElroy in our second show today at 3.30, who will be talking about Margaret Thatcher's impact, impact on women in politics and how her image is portrayed in the media. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you're a student at the atrium, it's easy to forget the facilities that we have on campus. So here's a short infomercial about our student union. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. Now, after a fantastic result for Cardiff City last night, they have now been promoted to the Premier League for the next season. This sets up the opportunity for w of Wales now having two teams in the English top flight, as well as the opportunity for at least two Welsh derbies next season. Now, Peter, a little birdie told us that you were a huge Cardiff City fan. So what did you think of the game last night? Well, I, I thought it was fantastic. I was, um, I was absolutely um, amazed that after 23 years of supporting Cardiff City, I was finally seeing it. Sorry, finally... Peter, you're... Cool. Is it having, we're having a bit of we're mic trouble a bit of again. Mic trouble. Sorry, guys. There we go. Thank you very That's much. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was amazed that after 23 years of um, supporting Cardiff City, that finally it was... Um, we, I was going to get to see my side promoted to the top flight. Um, it was a fantastic atmosphere in the Car City Stadium. One of those nights that you, um, that you that that reminds me of what my grandfather used to tell me in the, about the old and old times in um, Ninian Park, that last time when we got promoted to the top flight. So um, obviously I was absolutely delighted, yeah. Fantastic. Well, you were at the game last night, I assume. So what, just tell us a bit about what it was like when the final whistle blew. Well, it was a little bit of... I was a little bit um, struck by disbelief, I was. I was um, sort of looking um, looking around and thinking, this can't be happening. We're the club that nearly gets promoted and, <laughs> and then, then stumbles um, and falls at the last hurdle. Um, but, I mean, when I saw all these young, young people, people your age, jump running on the pitch, celebrating... <laughs> And thinking 15 years ago, it would, we wouldn't have a fan base of people your age supporting the club 
because we were useless and we were in <laughs> League Two and we had an average attendance of around about 3,000 and that the only achievement that we were looking for every season was to finish above Swansea. <laughs> and, and, and that was literally it. It was one year where Cardiff were third bottom in the league and the and Swansea were fourth bottom of the, foot, of the whole football league and we were trying to beat each other. So all of those thoughts came, through, came um, into my mind as, as the final whistle went and then obviously pure and utter euphoria um, and that, that, my, that my son is um, who's one, who's gonna, who's six months old is, is going to hopefully get a better life support in Cardiff <laughs> City than I've had. <laughs> So you mentioned that you've come, Cardiff City have come, come so close to the Premier League in past years. What does this mean now for Cardiff City and for the fans that they've finally got it? Well, for the club, I would I hope it means financial stability and the fact that the days of us um, fighting high court, high um, going to the high court to fight um, court cases to keep us solvent and over. Um, I think I think for the city it means um, it, it, it was very much I would say like um, when Wales won the Grand Slam or when the Six Nations were won this year it was immense pride in what the what the city and let, let's not just say this isn't isn't just a Cardiff victory. Mm. Cardiff's fan base comes from a wide area stretching across the South Wales valleys and as far as McCuncliffe I know a fan from and 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 some fans from Hollyhead. Um, so it's, this is very much a an all Wales club and, and and it was a fantastic achievement and people were travelling far and wide to watch it so um, I, the, for that for the fans it's absolutely it's it's it, it's um, pure vindication for all the years of supporting them when they were when they were having those dark times that I mentioned yeah. and also looking forward to beating Swansea hopefully next season <laughs> in the Premier League. Um, as um, a Swansea girl myself, <laughs> I know what it's done for um, a city. It's only been um, three three seasons for us, but it's it's done absolute wonders for the city. Do you think it can maybe do it even better at Cardiff? Because obviously Cardiff's a bigger city and it's the capital. I, d I don't know if it'll do better. I actually think the Premiership football's had a bigger impact on Swansea than it will do Cardiff. And, I'd re and that's the reason why I'll say that is Cardiff has had a lot of money pumped into it and a lot of investment mm. into it. Swansea hasn't had that the, the same level of investment and um, hasn't had the same level of focus on it. So them getting to the Premier League really launched Swansea as a launching pad, as not just competing with Cardiff, but as a city on a global stage. Cardiff was, no disrespect to Swansea, already no. sort of <laughs> on that global stage because of the Millennium Stadium and because of, of, the, of, of um, the fact that um, it played a large part in um, hosting, being, uh, being the host city of the Ryder Cup, even though it was in the Ryder Cup actually took part, part in Newport, a lot of the events took part, took place in Cardiff. So, um, but of course, it, it could, uh, the rough estimates are still suggesting it could be worth £500 million to the city wow. over the next three or four years, should Cardiff stay in the Premiership. Um, but the other thing is, it's, it's great for Welsh sport that Cardiff are going to play Swansea again in a major, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in the top flight for the first time ever. And 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 also the derbies were always great in the championship. They've always been great in League Two and One. Um, and to have it on a bigger stage is going to be fantastic for Welsh football. I hope now we'll get an influx of Welsh players because I'm a big fan of the Welsh national football mm -hmm. side as well, coming through both the ranks of, of Swansea and Cardiff and playing top flight football. Okay, we are running up a bit time a bit. But one last question. Um, you mentioned Cardiff and Swansea are going to play together. Now, there's a big rivalry between the fans. Is that going to cause any concern, do you think? No, I don't think so, because the police have got it pretty much sorted now. It's a, they, they've been bubble trips, which means you have to travel by coach ever since 1994. Um, there's been very, there was very few arrests at the last derby that took place on a Sunday at Swansea, and Cardiff played Swansea on a Saturday night, went at five o'clock where there was no problems at all. I mean, I think I'd, I'd like to think those days are gone. I'd like to think more mature heads will prevail on that. I mean, there's no, there's nothing wrong with the two clubs. You know, having a having a rivalry. I mean, I the first result I look for is Swansea's to make sure they've lost. But I mean, <laughs> but, I mean there's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is, is is that spilling over into the type of violence we saw in the late eighties and early nineties, which is completely out of order. And I think the police rightly got control of that. So mm. that today's not a day to be to be discussing that sort of thing. I think I think Swansea fans in their heart of hearts are actually delighted that the derby are coming back. Cardiff fans certainly are delighted that they're going up to play, to match what's what and hopefully 
try and match what Swansea have achieved in the last three years, which has been an, even for me a massive Cardiff City fan. You've got to take your hat off to them; they've achieved a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be um, it's going to it's going it's going to be a huge, huge um, platform for Welsh sport. It's good that that game will probably be televised to a global audience. Okay. Well, thanks very much for coming in to speak to us today. Yes, thank you for coming in. No thanks. Problem. And now we're going to head over to Alex in the cloud. Thank you, Laura. Uh, we've had one tweet we're going to pull up right now, which is from Kat Sovel, who was in um, yesterday. She says she had a great time with the crew at TV Exposure this afternoon. Thank you guys for having me on the show. If you missed that, uh, she's a musician, and we had a nice interview with her. And uh, a message to all budding musicians out there, if you want to get yourself on Exposure, get yourself a bit more exposure, then all you have to do is tweet at TV Exposure, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, after this, we've pulled up a hashtag for today. One of the trending hashtags is mention someone who has a pretty face, which I think is it's a wonderful idea. So tweet in at TV Exposure with the hashtag mention someone who has a pretty face, and tell us if there's anyone you've seen on this set who has a pretty face. There's no bias. Honest, I, I won't be offended. Uh, and we'd also like to give a shout out to Liam McClelland, who is our latest follower. So remember, guys, the Twitter address is at TV Exposure. So keep your tweets coming in as we absolutely love to hear from you. Um, we will be, I will keep checking that Twitter, so get them in and I will try and read them out. We want to hear how proud you are as Cardiff City fans. Uh, so get in contact and I will do my best to read everything out. Now, we all moan about the cost of gyms and only the rich and famous can afford personal trainers. But we're all in search of that perfect beach body. Just look at mine. So, <laughs> how do we stay fit while not breaking the bank? Personal trainer James Date has come in to show us just that. Hi, James. You okay? Hi, thank you. Good, yeah. Well, what exercises are you going to start showing us? What can we do to get really fit this summer? Um, well, the best thing we can do is... Can just turn the mic on. Oh, sorry. best thing we can, can do is... turn it on. Oh, it is, yeah. The best thing we do is a bit of cardio, uh, a bit of body weight resistance exercises. So, uh, so you're obviously working against your own body weight and get yourself trim and fit for summer. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll so start with a nice simple exercise, um, just a squat. Okay. Standing squat. So I've got Jamie here to demonstrate. Hi, so Jamie. I'm looking, looking for is Jamie to stand feet shoulder width apart. Right. Um, some people find it easier to put their hands out in front of them yeah. or across their body. Yeah. I'm just going to squat down to vertical level and back up. Okay. okay. Wow, that, that, that's quite a squat. I don't, I'm not sure. Quite a squat. <laughs> Just remember to keep a nice straight back position and look forward. So Head what muscle chest. group is this exercise? Um, this is predominantly legs. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's a big muscle group. It burns the most calories, most fat. So, you know, the, what I'd suggest is do it at your own pace, but each time you do it, try and increase the repetitions and number you do to achieve good physique, hopefully. Well, okay. fantastic. Is there maybe another exercise you could show us? Yeah, um, maybe for the core area. Mm -hmm. um, it's an exercise called the plank. So Jamie likes to go down into a presser position. That's it. So as you can see, nice straight back position. Yeah. What you're doing, you're holding your own body weight mm -hmm. for as long as you can. You'll start to feel it around the back area and around the stomach. So obviously, in the mini, you'll start shaking, which is, <laughs> which is a natural reaction, and then you'll fall down. So if you get like a little clock, you can try and time yourself for how far you go in each time mm. and try and beat you next time. Are you telling me to do yeah. it? I, I know this is quite a hard one. I've tried this one myself This is quite before. hard. This, this is quite this is hard. hard. Okay. This, Slightly more advanced, but it's a very good exercise. Like, he's brilliant here. He's still going. <laughs> he's doing really well. <laughs> Jamie, how does that feel down there? Not too good. No, not too good. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Is there one more exercise you could show us? Uh, yeah, maybe one for arms. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've got some dumbbells here set up. So what we're going to do is um, bicep curls. Yeah. So just hold them in the palm of your hand. Yeah. This is something I could have a go at as well. Go on. it. There's, 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 there's another okay. lot there. <laughs> go on, light. All right. Right. Okay, so hold them in palm of your hands. Yep. Palms facing upwards. Okay. Now you're going to do simultaneously, just bring them up to your shoulders and back down. That's one repetition. All right, that's not too bad. No. Okay. <laughs> so let's well, you keep doing let's that. go you for five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up and down, say a nice and slow pace. So obviously, not everyone's got dumbbells at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you could use um, maybe some 
cans of beans or, or them uni textbooks you don't actually use, <laughs> quite possibly. Um, yeah, brilliant. The steps. The steps. Yeah. This is... Uh, these down. I'll get someone fit to demonstrate this. Laura, would you like to uh, have a go? Oh, yeah, go, on. <laughs> go on then. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do is, yep. come this light. Oh this dear. Is slightly more advanced. Oh gosh. So as you step up, yeah. one foot on the floor, step up, mm -hmm. and drive your leg up to your chest. Oh gosh. Well, <laughs> maybe the lower step. Is super, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would probably be better, yes. So drive so, your knee up to your chest. Obviously use your opposite hand if you want as well for power. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you try to do 10 on one leg, and then, and then swap then over sides. 10 on the other. And then when you get really good, maybe 20 or 30. Well, that, that's we'll a really good... Then. <laughs> Thanks very much. So any cardio, cardio intense exercise. So how long mm. would you be expected to do this to see any real change? Um, Not too long, I hope. <laughs> uh, change is uh, sort of a lifestyle thing. So obviously, if you eat well as well and do the exercises, it's a matter of weeks. Literally a matter of weeks. That's great. Well, I hope you all will now get fit for summer. Thank you so much <laughs> yes. for coming in. Thank no you both problem. for coming in. Thank you very much. Um, now we've got... Um, I know I'll be going to try out some of those, yes. Um, now it's time to take a quick break, so join us here for the final part of the show. Jump on board Princess Catherine, the reliable water bus service, for a relaxing journey along the River Taff. The boat offers a regular service between Cardiff City Centre and Cardiff Bay, giving you the opportunity to indulge in all that Cardiff has to offer. The boat departs every half an hour throughout the day and costs £3 per adult and £2 per child. Made with the finest Swarovski elements, And stunning crystal cards. Crystal Fizz will create your own uniquely handmade wedding and event stationery. It's like Hello and welcome to Tequila Radio. Tequila Radio, the e-student radio station for Glamorgan. Live from the atrium, into your ears. This isn't a sandwich. This isn't a sandwich. This is a sandwich. Delhi, the only place for lunch. Welcome back to the final part of today's show. We hope you've enjoyed everything we've had so far, and there's still so much more to come. Don't forget to keep tweeting us in, as there is not much left. Time to read out. So that's at TV Exposure, and Alex will read them out later in on the show. Now, st still to come on today's show, we will have In the Spotlight, where we let you guys know, and we'll be talking about things to do with the university. We take a look at another hidden gem of Cardiff, as our reporter Bethan shows you the wonders of Cosmiston. We t also take a look at what's in store for the next show with Alex and Robin. We have the dreaded presenter challenge in which Laura and myself face off against each other. <laughs> That'll be an interesting one. Yep, I'm going to win. <laughs> oh, I'm not so sure about <laughs> that. <laughs> and we take a look at some entertainment news as well as well as about chi oh, sorry, about size, <laughs> new single charting <laughs> and becoming an internet sensation. But now let's find out what's been in the spotlight this week. A global campaign has been launched to encourage young people to stop texting while driving after an American student was killed in a car accident. Alex has come over from the cloud to discuss this with us. 
Hello, Alex. Thank you for guys. coming over. Yeah, so basically this has all come from uh, a text from an American kid who was driving his car and texting whilst driving and ultimately crashed and has died. And then what they've decided to do to try and create an international campaign by publicising his last text in a hope that it will, you know, it will... Yeah have an effect on, on young drivers. Um, I'm not sure if viewers at home have seen um, the text. It's quite a striking image. Mm. It's it's quite shocking, really. Mm. Um, the, the young boy driving was actually uh, mid-sentence with his text um, when he, um, he unfortunately had a very fatal crash. I, I think it's quite striking because it's quite a simple text. If you read yeah. it, it's yes. just like a, I don't know, it's sort of a I'll see you in a bit type text. But it makes you think, it's just so simple that it really hits you and says, well, did you need to send that? Could you send that later? Could you pull over and send it? Absolutely. Did you need to be doing that? And I think the idea is that it will have an impact with, I think it's younger drivers, you know, people yeah. who first passed yes. up to mid, later 20s. I mean, the, the problem's probably universal, but it's kind of our age group that are more prone to it. I think the idea is it's kind of, this is, a format in which we we recognize that text format we yeah. recognize yes. these simple texts that we send to our friends and it's sort of saying well it could be you mm. do you want to do that do you really want to text while you're driving do you think though because personally i think that this campaign isn't really going to work so i think young people are still going to text like you know how long has this law been in place now where you can't use your phone while driving and you can drive down like you can drive 500 yards down the road and you can pass at least like a handful of people on their phones and you just think why uh, yeah I whether this will change the issue I mean for me it shocked me it was I was quite upset by it but I'm someone who would never dream of looking at my phone anyway while I'm driving whether it'll have an effect with the people who are still doing this is I don't know it needs to be seen really hmm. just gonna have to wrap up from now okay all right here at Exposure, we like to show you all your area has to offer. We all live in and around Cardiff, but how much time do you actually get to explore it? Beth and Breen reports with today's Hidden Gem. Cosmeston Lakes Country Park, situated between Panath and Sully. Cosmeston Lakes really is a hidden gem. to the public in 1978, Cosmeston wasn't always the beautiful landscape it is now known as. spans over 240 acres and provides people of all ages with a favourite daytime destination. Over the years the park has grown and expanded, becoming home to various wildlife. A number of conservation areas have been set up around the park to encourage and ensure that birds, bats and amphibians can continue to live in their habitats. Children's Park, two large lakes, cafe and visitor's centre, along with various walking routes provide the public with hours of enjoyment that keep them coming back.
joined by Bethan in the studio. Oh, yeah. So Bethan, mm -hmm. tell us about your trip. Oh, to be honest, I've never heard of the place before. And it's just, just between um, Penarth and Sully, and it's so scenic. Like, there's about 240 acres, I think I say it in the VT, there's like 240 acres, and it's just beautiful. I, I don't think we could have picked a better day to go on, to be honest. It looked absolutely stunning. I mean, there's, there's the lakes up there as well. It looks absolutely, it just looks picturesque. Yeah, they, they do a lot of um, conservation work there to try and encourage, like, encourage habitats for like bats and birds and all that. So it's, it is a really good park. But um, originally it was a quarry, which I don't think I mentioned in the VT, but it was originally a quarry. And um, they decided to turn it into um, into this big park and when they were doing it they found um, ruins from dating back to the medieval yeah. times yeah. and um, they got archaeologists in there and then they found like foundations of buildings and stuff so uh, there was images in the VT of um, the medieval village that they got going there now it's I haven't been there yet it's on my to-do list <laughs> I definitely go in there well, especially now we've got some nicer weather coming as well it, oh, it looks yeah. like it'd be a great place to go it does look amazing and in the summer holidays especially the, apparently they do um, like guided tours there as well oh, and cool. um, they dress up in medieval clothing and stuff so it looks amazing it's right up my street history <laughs> it looks fantastic um, and how did you enjoy your time there Oh, I loved it. I think I, I made a new friend in the producer's dog. <laughs> <laughs> she looked beautiful. <laughs> she, she was living life there. She really was. Jumping into the lake and stuff as well. And so if the people watching right now wanted to go, whereabouts is it? Um, it's between Penarth and Selly. Um, I couldn't actually tell you the exact location, but <laughs> you can find it out on the website. Um, but yeah, it was just just such a nice area. Um, is there a visitor centre there as well, like to get some information Yeah, and it's about open all year round as well. Oh, um, well, open all year round bar Christmas Day. Oh, so I don't think anyone really. will be going there at Christmas. <laughs> but it, it is, yeah. And they have a cafe there as well and a children's park. So if you wanted to take like children with you as well, it's, oh, it's got a bit of the, every, everything for everyone, like kind of thing. Fantastic. <laughs> it sounds like an absolutely beautiful place. Well, thank you very much for coming no in problem. to talk to us. And now it's time to check in with Robin to find out what's happening on the second of today's shows. Thanks, Laura. We'll be talking with Ruth McElroy about her thoughts on the late Margaret Thatcher. We have an interview with the multi-talented Carolyn Hitt, who talks about her new book, Wales Play in Red. Joel will be reading out your tweets in the cloud, and Alex and I will be going head-to-head -head in the presenter challenge. We also have a look at Cardiff Food Bank and have a performance with the wonderful Erin May. That's all coming up at 3.30, along with lots more. That seems like some exciting stuff. So now let's check over with Alex in the cloud. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, we have had a tweet in uh, and it's for you, Lloyd. This is from Dewey House saying, check Lloyd, dealing with the technical problems like a pro, dealing with our mic problems. Sorry, we've been having a couple of issues today, but Lloyd, keep it up. Uh, it, it, Dewey then went on to tweet about hashtag, mention someone who has a pretty face. Lloyd, you seem to be the popular one you were mentioned again, although we have had other tweets in saying we all have pretty faces, so thank you guys. Uh, we have a new follower, so thank you to Leanne Gamble who's following us. We're up to 506 followers, guys. Can we make 510 by the end of the show? Please, help us out, and um, we'll keep you updated on that one. Don't forget, we are enjoying the hashtag mention someone who has a pretty face, uh, and just in, hot off the press, Peter Bradbury, who you've just seen on the show, has just tweeted in to say he very much enjoyed sharing his euphoria about Cardiff City getting promoted. Thanks. Uh, and nope, thank you for coming in. So keep the tweets coming in uh, on today's final part of the show. Get them in quick, and I'll be sure to try and read them out. Now, this is the part of the show where we take part in the presenter's challenge. We don't know what the challenge is, but I can't wait to find out. I can see toilet roll, so I am nervous. <laughs> That's all we know about this challenge. So, Alex, what have you got in store for us? Alex has just popped over right, from guys. the cloud. <laughs> oh, I've lost my toilet rolls for a moment there. Uh, basically, I'm the referee today, uh, and I hold the challenge. So, today's challenge is known as Roly Poly Oli. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, both presenters, you will be armed with a toilet roll, uh, and your task is to, uh, sorry, the aim of the Words fail me. <laughs> uh, basically, what you've exciting. got to do is you've got to unravel it as quickly as you can. Now, there is a Guinness right. World Record for this. The first person, 
The winner is the first person to hand me the cardboard tube <laughs> from inside the toilet roll. <laughs> okay. As I say, there is genuinely yeah. a world record for this, and it was done in four. 0.07 seconds. How sad have you got to be meant to practice and roll in the toilet It's paper. skill, Lloyd, it's skill. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Like, that, like, if someone could hold it, maybe, but I'm not... No, 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 oh. no, no. It's all on your own hands. So oh. you've got to start it and get it all off, and the winner <laughs> okay. is the one to hand me the cardboard inner. You right, know, okay. You understand, guys. Are you yeah. ready? <laughs> if you like, you go On down. your marks. Okay. Oh, oh, can we, do we, should we leave it on the floor? Put it on the ground. Okay. Put it on the ground. Okay. No interfering. I didn't <laughs> stand up. Are we ready? On your marks. Get set. Ah, no, no. Just go. That's a good start. No, Lloyd. Oh. Does it have to be sure enrolled or can now I just... Now that is a technique. Well, I need the cardboard without any toilet roll on it. Oh, who did this, this is in four really seconds? Difficult. This is really hard. Well, you've missed your four seconds. The world record has oh. gone, but oh. you can still win today's oh. presenter challenge. <laughs> Lloyd going for the technique of just no. ripping multiple it's times. It's not working, no. no. Don't cheat, I'm gonna Lloyd. Fail. And Laura's doing the, oh. the sort of the washing machine technique. God. Yeah, I, I feel like even... I, when I was on, younger, Lloyd. I used to do knitting with my nana. And this is what it's like. On my left, a small part of toilet roll. On my right, a large part of toilet roll. Oh, oh my God. You're going to have to work on it if you want the world record, guys. Mm. This is this, No, this is awful. I'm nowhere near world Lloyd's record standards. Sort of one bit off at a time. Oh, it's hard quiet. when it's shorter. <laughs> I need to concentrate. Go on, Laura. You're nearly there. No. Oh. I feel like I'm mummying myself. Uh, this isn't going to go well. Home. Do tweet in and let us know how quickly you can unravel a toilet roll. <laughs> Seriously, guys, no. if you can do this, yes. I'll be Laura's impressed. Yes! yes! No! Yes! No. <laughs> well, I will only fight for the rest of the show, OK? <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Lloyd and Laura, I think we have a definite winner there. <laughs> oh, well, well I'm not sure to th what to think of that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> now, we all love some freebies, especially when payday is so far away. Here at Exposure TV, we are doing our very best to collect as many prizes as possible to give you guys at home a chance to win them all. Let's take a look at what you can win and how to enter. Two pints, two wraps, and two free entries to Goody Who, a voucher for a New York sandwich, a box of 12 free cupcakes, 20% off a personalized pet portrait, 10% off a photography session with Abigail Lewis Photography, 10 pound voucher for Milgies, a set of Lego, and signed pictures from Derek Brockway, as well as Welsh internationals Toby Falatau, Ryan Jones, and Jonathan Davis. Simply answer the following question. Tiger Bay is an area in which city? A. Cardiff B. Newport or C. Swansea Tweet your answers using the hashtag Exposure Competition Answers will be drawn at random on Friday, April 26th via our Twitter All decisions are final Prizes will be for collection at an arranged date You can enter as many times as you like but of course no one from the Exposure team may enter Good luck! It's okay, Lloyd. You just need to practice. <laughs> I'll win next time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's time to go back to Alex in the cloud. <laughs> what have you got for us, Alex? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, unfortunately, since we were last here, we haven't had any fresh tweets. So, guys at home, at TV Exposure, send us your messages now. Let us know what you think of Lloyd and Laura's toilet unrolling skills. Um, quite interesting, really. And don't forget, there's another show after us, so keep, keep tweeting in to give Joe something to talk about. And uh, use, use the hashtag that we're commandeering today, which is mention someone who has a pretty face. Unfortunately, that's it for me today. But thank you all for your views and opinions. Keep them coming, because as I say, Joe's on the next show at 3.30, and I'm sure he'll do his best to read all of your tweets out. Thanks, Alex. Now let's move on to today's entertainment news. We're all aware of the party classic Gangnam Style, and I'm sure everybody knows the moves. And recently, Sai's second single has been released, and it went viral. It sure did. <laughs> uh, his new single is called Gentleman, and it is just as bad as his first. Oh, Lloyd, how could you? I, I personally, I think it's a fantastic song. Very catchy, and again, Sai has given us some iconic dance moves for us all to do when we're out. I'm sure yes. you've danced to Gangnam Style. Well, I just find him very quite immature, me saying that with toilet roll wrapped <laughs> around my arm. But I... And in his new video, like, I think the way that he treats women is quite rude and I just think he's just an idiot. Oh, <laughs> I, think, I think maybe it's a bit tongue-in-cheek. I think it's all meant to be Probably. quite a lot of light-hearted fun. <laughs> um, I, quite, I quite enjoyed it. I think, I think that's, that's the novelty of Sai, really, is yeah. that it is quite cheeky, quite, quite innocent fun, I think. I, 
I quite like it. And on its, its um, the video got released for it, and on its first 40 hours of being on YouTube, it got 50 million hits. That's incredible. That is very <laughs> impressive. And we've also got to remember that for us, this is only his second single, but where he's originally from, obviously he's got about, I think it's seven albums already he, released. Yeah, he's he's a hard worker. He's yeah. got a lot of music out there. And well, maybe he'll bring that to the UK with him. You never know. Hmm. I tell you one classic, though, that I have loved being in the charts at the moment is, of course, Let's Get Ready to Rumble by Anton Deck. Oh. No, not a fan. No. Ah, I thought you'd like the cheesy music. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, I like cheesy One Direction, but not Ant and Dead. Oh, they, no. They <laughs> <laughs> when, um, when Let's Get Ready to Rumble was first released, I think yeah. it was, that was 1994, and I believe the highest it got was number nine in the charts. Something like that, number seven. Number yeah, nine, yeah. It, it got into the top ten, but it never broke it to the top spot. Um, this time, they, they released it um, mm -hmm. after, after a fantastic performance on... Um, a fantastic performance on, what's the programme called? I'm blank. Saturday Night Takeaway. Saturday Night Takeaway, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm more interested in exposure TV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they did a fantastic performance of it, of course. It went straight to number one. I, mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, well, I think we need another opinion. So we're going to invite Alex over. <laughs> Alex come, is coming back to the sofa come, from well, the club. Come join us. Ah. What do you think about all this cheesy music about Alex? Now, I'm a huge fan of cheesy music. I won't lie. <laughs> I, I do enjoy a bit of cheese. Psy, I'm going to say I think he's a brilliant performer. I think he's a brilliant artist. He has clearly has some very weird ideas, but <laughs> the, the public love him, you know, with all these crazy dance moves. And I, you can definitely see in his latest one, Shades of Gangnam Style, it's very similar. I think it could catch on. Um, well, as you say, it went viral very, very quickly. He's Absolutely. got that potential. Ant and Deck. Oh, no. <laughs> Again, a brilliant presenters. I won't. I don't want to do them that injustice. They're great guys. I just don't. The song's old. The, oh. the, I mean, re-releasing it's been great for them. I mean, it's gone to number one. I, I think mm. their fame has has helped do that. Of course. Ah, I'm just not a fan of it. I think the best thing they could have done with that single is as soon as they realised the potential it mm. had to go to number one, is they offered up all the money to charity. And I think that is good. I think that's that's a great thing to come from that sing single mm -hmm. is that they can do something like that. But I love Sai. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I'm undecided on Sai, but as Lloyd said, it's his seventh album now, so I yeah. will give him his due. He's now been signed up by, or has he been promoted by Justin Bieber's manager? Yes, I'm for not sure. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's all very interesting. Okay, now, once again, we want to let you know about our competition. Everyone loves a competition, and we have got some great prizes for you guys to try and get your hands on. I know that I'm excited about some of these guests. Let's take another look at what you can win and how to enter. Two pints, two wraps, and two free entry to Goody Who. A voucher for a New York sandwich. A box of 12 free cupcakes. 20% off a personalized pet portrait. 10% off a photography session with Abigail Lewis Photography. 10 pound voucher for Milgies. A set of Lego. And signed pictures from Derek Brockway, as well as Welsh internationals Toby Falatau, Ryan Jones and Jonathan Davis. Simply answer the following question. Tiger Bay is an area in which city? A. Cardiff, B. Newport or C. Swansea? Tweet your answers using the hashtag exposure competition. Answers will be drawn at random on Friday, April 26th via our Twitter. All decisions are final. Prizes will be for collection at an arranged date. You can enter as many times as you like, but of course, no one from the Exposure team may enter. Good luck. Well, sadly, that's it from us today, but don't forget to stay tuned for Alex and Robin at 3.30. So keep your tweets coming in, and Joe will do his best to read them out. From everyone here at Exposure TV, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>